Hi there, I'm Sonal Merotra Kapoor and this is an exclusive chat right here on Money Control. Now, 30th of June, 2022. You don't know it just yet, but this is a milestone in India's space journey. This, as two Indian startups, are headed to the space. Many have described it also as India's big SpaceX moment. All this possible because India now is investing big when it comes to ensuring that private activity increases in the space. Not very long ago, we had the Prime Minister himself launch a program, an independent body in space, which is going to look at exactly that. So on this iconic day, joining us for this exclusive chat is Mr. Pavan Goenka. Hello and welcome, sir. He's the chairman of InSpace and somebody who's been talked about so far about cars and now about space. There is lots to really decode in the middle, but what a day to be having this conversation with you. Welcome to many, uh, you're talking to us here, sir, and welcome to Money Control. Before we begin, I just want to give our viewers a quick glimpse into what exactly InSpace is all about. इक्कीसवीं सदी के आधुनिक भारत की विकास यात्रा में एक शानदार अध्याय जुड़ा है इंडियन नेशनल स्पेस प्रमोशन एंड ऑथोराइजेशन सेंटर यानी इन स्पेस के हेडक्वार्टर के लिए सभी देशवासियों को और विशेष करके साइंटिफिक कम्युनिटी को मैं बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं भारत की स्पेस इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए इन स्पेस का लॉन्च होना वॉच दिस स्पेस मोमेंट की तरह ही है ऑल राइट सो वॉच दिस स्पेस एंड you got to watch this space really to understand what the next big innovation is going to be about. Mr. Goenka, as we speak, a big milestone is really being unveiled in the country. By the time a lot of our viewers actually see this program and see this interaction, we would have achieved that. How proud are you really to be putting up two Indian startups in the space for the first time? Well, it's certainly a, a sort of a milestone event uh, for the Indian space sector. Uh, clearly, a big uh, uh, starting point for in space itself uh, to be able to uh, uh, authorize two companies and launch their uh, uh, their payloads on uh, ISRO's C-53 uh, PSLV launcher, uh, which will happen uh, uh, in in an hour or so. Uh, and and it's a very very big uh, very big sort of uh, starting point. And I would uh, kind of uh, Call it as a small step in some sense, but uh, something that could become fairly big for India uh, as things progress, because the space economy uh, is huge. Globally, the space economy is $400 billion. We only $7 billion. And it's only private sector that can come in and really fully exploit the potential of the space economy. And that's what makes today a very big day. Right. And you're right about the economy. I'll come to that in a bit. But before I lose my viewers to understanding what is payload, what is satellite, let me just simplify <laughs> it for everybody. This is a satellite is like a carrier. A payload is a parcel on that carrier and that parcel has to be taken to space. And that is what is happening today. Two tech companies, two startups in India are sending their own payloads into space and that's happening why is that huge because remember india so far was doing it only through government organization and government satellites were going but at a time when uh, space tourism is a reality of our times what a year we've had we've seen the biggest billionaires of the world actually travel to space then why not india and that space that uh, mr goenka spoke about only two percent share in the larger economy is something that india really needs to capture uh, Mr. Goenka, tell us how will in space help this journey? So let me first uh, uh, say the following uh, for the benefit of viewers. Uh, it's a fact that most people do not know what role space plays in their life from the time that we wake up to the time that we go to bed and even when we are sleeping. 
right? And the Honorable Prime Minister has been talking about it uh, in everything that we do around, uh, whether it's agriculture, weather forecasting, cyclone, uh, fishery, uh, uh, communication, uh, broadcasting, everywhere. Uh, space GPS, is, uh, reality of our times. Right now, right now, uh, what we're talking perhaps is going through space. Uh, so so yeah. it's uh, something which people don't understand and don't know that the space is all around us. Okay. Uh, and and um, India, another thing that people may not know is that India in terms of technology in a space sector is not far behind the leading players. In fact, it can rub shoulders with best in the world uh, when it comes to yeah. space technology. So when you put the two together and the fact that Indian uh, space economy is less than 2% of the global economy, uh, I think that's what brings that opportunity for us. Now, mm. you started talking about various space objects and again, in a very simplistic manner, uh, and I've also learned only in the last six to eight months, there is a rocket. The rocket's yeah. role is to launch a satellite and mm. rocket's life is only about 30 minutes, uh, maybe not even that much. Right. Mm. Uh, and what it's doing is taking the satellite to space and it could be various orbits that Leo, Mio, uh, uh, different kind of orbits. We won't get into that. The satellite is simply rotating around the world, around around the Earth for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It keeps going round and round and round. Inside is a payload or multiple payloads. The payloads are the things that are doing the work. The payloads are receiving signal, transmitting signal taking photographs, sending photographs, and that's what is giving us the data, the value that we know, that, that we finally use. If everybody knows about Mangalyan, Chandrayaan, those are scientific missions. Those missions give us the technical ability to do the commercial missions. Uh, and that's what mm -hmm. now we are focusing on, that how do we convert our technology? How do we convert our know-how? How do we convert our infrastructure that we have in India? And you have a very beautiful picture right there which is mm. a very good launch pad that India has. And mm. private sector's role is to come in and say, hey, Isro, you have done a lot. Now help us to pick your technology, to pick your expertise, and see how we can enter the commercial uh, stage uh, of space and add right. value to it. And if you look mm. world over, it is the mm. private sector, whether you look in USA, you look in Europe, you look in uh, mm. uh, many different countries, it's the private mm. sector that has really moved the space economy forward, where the space mm. agencies have worked on bringing science and technology. Space mm. agencies have worked on uh, uh, sort of creating the infrastructure and space agencies have done the initial work and then private mm. sector has come in. And that's what India is trying to do, uh, where, which many countries have already done. And today, mm. as you said, is the first step in that direction and therefore it's a very big day. Indeed, and just to like jog everybody's memory over there in United States, for example, they had to shut down their space program and that's where Elon Musk was actually born and SpaceX was born. They said, we'll do something that the government perhaps does not or could not get resources to do. And that's the space we really want to enter. And you're so right when you say that people don't understand. There was a phrase I read somewhere, what on earth is the value of space? Yes. I don't think people understand that. And you know, you gave some really nice examples, but I want viewers to understand this. You perhaps went from your home to office today, looking at the GPS, that GPS is operating and giving you live location because there is a satellite in space. You are, I'm doing this transaction and interaction online because there is some spatial element over there. In fact, talking about that, one of the big places where space can really enter is the internet service, something that the world is now talking about. We'll come to that, in fact, in a minute. But today is the day for startups, right? Today is the day for private companies to really dream big, to say that, you know, sky is not the limit anymore. So India at the moment has a thriving startup network. The prime minister in his address also spoke about over 100 startups at the moment who are working in this sector. Yes, uh, so there are hundred more than hundred startups in the space, but two third of them uh, were founded in the last two years. So if you go back in two thousand nineteen, we only had about thirty. So it mm. really the whole momentum of space startup is very new for India. Uh, the oldest startup perhaps is uh, one of the companies that's going up with Rohit Space. They were they were founded in two thousand twelve, and the other one, Digantra, uh, which is going up today, is two thousand eighteen. Uh, mm. Now, 
I think it's very important to see that no one should be in a false sort of thinking that it will all happen easily. It won't. Okay. Everybody talks about SpaceX, but one forgets what it took to bring a SpaceX where it is today. What kind of money, money was pumped into it by the hmm. founder and by investors into it. What kind of support? He famously was, said he almost went broke. Yes. What kind of support was given to SpaceX from NASA? All of these things hmm. we have to keep in mind. And then a SpaceX is born 20 years later. So hmm. nobody should start counting uh, their sort of <laughs> return on investment immediately saying, look, I'm in <laughs> now, I'm going up today. Pretty soon I'm going to be SpaceX. You won't. Uh, it will, it will hmm. take time. But that's mm. what we have to strive for. We have to say that India, why India should not have a SpaceX. India should. Mm. Uh, but we have to work towards it. We have to uh, do everything that needs to be done to be successful. It's technology. Mm. That's required. Perseverance that is required. Very important. And most important, uh, mm. uh, it requires investment. And this right. is where Indian startups right now have a mm. disadvantage compared to what's happening in U.S. Uh, for example, mm. the total investment so far made in Indian space startups so far, cumulative, is of the order of $100 million. USA I gets see. 20 times that much in one year. Okay. So we wow. also have to show some success. And one mm. of the values of today's launch is that once mm. investors start saying, yes, something now is happening. Yes, mm. these startups are going starting baby steps and trying to demonstrate that Indian startups mm. can uh, perform in mm. space, then money mm. will start. Uh, and once money com starts coming in, more and more uh, effort can be put in by the startup. So this is a very important part that one should not forget, that to right. reach to that level of a SpaceX, a lot of money to be pumped in, which will mm. have to happen by not the founders, because mm. finder, founders won't have that kind of deep pocket that the founder of mm. SpaceX had. It will have to happen from investors uh, who mm. will have to mm. come in and believe mm. in the future of space, believe mm. in the company, believe in the founder that they're investing in and put mm. in their money and have the perseverance right. to wait for the return. You're absolutely right, sir, there. But, you know, it takes me to a very interesting statistic that I was reading. It said that 24% Indians want to work today in the space sector, which is more than any other country in the world that basically talks about Indian youth's space aspirations, Right. So in an environment like this, when a young boy is sitting watching this interview, perhaps, or watching a launch, or a young startup team sitting in their boardroom and watching this interview, if they are listening to you right now, what would you say is the path ahead for them and how can InSpace help? So, uh, so first of all, uh, uh, Sonal, when you listen to the Honorable Prime Minister's speech that he made on uh, 10th of June in, in uh, Ahmedabad, he said that space activity is the pride of the nation. Hmm. When a Chandrayaan goes up, the whole country hmm. comes to a standstill and watches uh, those, hmm. uh, those those videos that, that come on our TV screen. Uh, hmm. And and that's what that's where you're seeing the interest in the Indian uh, sort of youth to get into space activity in some way, shape or form. Now, up hmm. until now, and this is the major change, this is the major change that's happening and something that could become very big uh, in few mm. years. Up until now, the only thing they could do was join ISRO. That's all. Mm. There's no other option for uh, for sort of realizing the dream of playing in the space sector. You join ISRO and you retire from ISRO, which is mm. which is good. ISRO is a very good organization and you, I mean, really, really excellent scientists that I have interacted with there and I, I'm, mm. I'm proud of what ISRO has done. But that was the only option available to the youth. Now, mm. with what is happening is, there are two more options. One is to go out on your own and do mm. something, become a start, become a startup, become a founder. And second is to work for the uh, startups uh, that have been set up by somebody. Right? And the third thing, uh, which is again in the private industry, one, one, one should keep in mind that it's not just a game of a startup. It's not only startups who are interested in space. We talk about startups mm. quite a bit, but the large companies mm. that have been up to now the vendors to ISRO. I see to space technology and I you mentioned see. some time ago about the mm. internet services we'll come back and talk about that mm. but there are many mm. large companies uh, and I won't mm. name any right now but there are many large mm. companies that are looking at space in a very different way saying okay I've supplied to ISRO for the last 20 25 30 years mm. now can I become the next ISRO 
uh, and, oh, and what yeah. do I need to do? What do I need to do? So these people yeah. have big pockets, deep pockets, right? So they are not going to be depending on the investors. Uh, of course, mm. they have to show return to their shareholders, but they're not depending mm. on investors to necessarily bring in money. Uh, mm. And and they are also looking at the space in a very different light and saying, can I really become a space player rather than being mm. a space or a space vendor? I see. Would you say that watching billionaires across the globe, Jeff Bezos or watching Virgin Atlantic, watching Richard do this has sort of inspired confidence and there is now a entire group of people saying, why not? And the good part is there is a platform now in space does exactly that. Give them an inlet into on, on that journey. Yeah. So I would I would put it this way that uh, uh, world has more made more billionaires in fields other than space. So it is not just the space billionaires that are creating that excitement. It is that mm -hmm. space is exciting. Uh. Okay, so so the space billionaire give you sort of a hope that if I got mm -hmm. into a space, it's not just because it's exciting; it could mm -hmm. also make me money. Uh, it Makes can also make me rich. Sense. That is yeah. not. I don't think that is the driver. Hmm. I don't think that's the sole driver because, as I said, that there are many more billionaires in other things than in space. Uh, hmm. And 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 the the main thing is that somebody mentioned the other day that if you were to ask uh, school children what you hmm. want to do when you grow up. A disproportionate number will say that I want to become an astronaut. Right? Mm. How many mm. astronauts do we need in the world? Just a handful. But everybody wants to become an astronaut because of the excitement that the space sector has. And that's what yeah. I'm really, I mean, you can feel the excitement that I have now that that by trying to bring mm. in the private sector into space, mm. we are mm. opening up a whole new avenue, mm. a whole new channel mm. for mm. our youth to live their dream, hmm. create an economic impact on the country and hmm. and change the lives of people. Because hmm. the impact on society of hmm. what can happen with the space hmm. is even a lot more than the impact on economics, economic value, and the impact in terms of fulfilling your dream. Uh, because, right. because India is still not at the cutting edge of hmm. space applications, uh, cutting edge of data uh, that hmm. we are able to get from space. There is a lot more that we can do, and that's a lot more that will happen now with the help of ISRO. I keep hmm. I keep stressing that point. It will be always yes. with the help of ISRO, at least for the next decade or so. Right. But, sir, give me an insight then on how exactly do you see and which all sectors do you see getting impacted because of, of this opening? And I obviously want to talk about the thing that's got everybody excited from, uh, you know, uh, Bharti to Reliance to the big giants in the country all looking at the space internet service as well. So that's very, very exciting space. But apart from that, where which all sectors do you see really opening up over here? So see, right now, when you look at the current thrust that the startups and other companies have, it is in what we call the upstream activity. Uh, that is uh, building, lock, building rockets, uh, building satellites, launching satellites. Uh, and and the, and the, the two today, for example, are payloads going uh, going up for two different things. Uh, there are two mm. companies working on making uh, small rockets, uh, small launch vehicles. Uh, mm. There are companies that are working on making satellites, full uh, full size satellites. But mm. if you look at the space economy of four hundred billion dollar that we talk of it, the mm. bulk of it sits in applications, not mm. in upstream. And right. what we need to kind of channel our energy of startups is not to just look at the what one would call the glamorous part of space, which is going up in your rocket or take your satellite up there and, and, and orbit it for 20 years, but hmm. the application part of space, hmm. because that's the one where the biggest value is, hmm. and that's the one where biggest impact will come on the lives of our uh, our people. Right, the, the impact doesn't come from satellite going up. Impact comes from the data that comes down. And what do we do yes. with that data? Right. So mm -hmm. today, if you were to look back 20 years ago, uh, many of the viewers probably cannot look back 20 years ago because they're too young at that time. But if you look at 20 years ago and look at what kind of weather forecasting we did, yeah. I remember Aswani when I was a kid. Aaj mm -hmm. ke kuch mein baris hone ke hai. <laughs> that was a weather forecast, right? Today you can pinpoint it exactly what will happen. 
Yeah. Now that kind of thing we have moved quite a bit, quite a bit, but not yet at the cutting edge. And we mm. need to do that, and that's what is going to make a huge difference. So to me, that's very important. But if you were to look at economic value creation, mm. I think mm. India can become can do two things uh, that is not happening today. India can become a manufacturing hub for space objects. Uh, mm. India has doesn't have the ability right now to the level that is required, but I'm mm. hoping the startups will create that ability to be a manufacturing base for different space objects, uh, for ground mm. stations, for terminals, for for satellites, for payloads, all of that. And that's a huge mm. market. If you can do it for the world, if you do it just for mm. India, it's a small market. If you can do mm. it for the world, it's a huge market. India can become a launch pad mm. for the world. Right? Our launching costs are lower, can become even further lower when the volume goes up. Can mm. India be launching uh, satellites for others? Uh, so that's mm. another activity that we can look at. So I would look at three areas, the application, the manufacturing hub, and mm. the launch pad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, you know, everything that you're talking about is really going to come down to the basics of how good the investment is going to be. How close are we to a new space policy? What about FDI investments? How exactly are you accelerating that? So, see, fortunately, um, uh, Government of India right now is uh, open to look at anything that needs to be looked at to enable the private sector to come into space. So the new mm -hmm. policy that we've been talking about for quite some time, and it's now around the corner, uh, removes almost all the restriction that private sector had in a space mm -hmm. participant. It almost opens up the door of ISRO wide open mm -hmm. to say you come in and you mm -hmm. tell me what you want me to help you with, right? It mm -hmm. will enable the technology that ISRO has, which today is used only by ISRO, enable the mm -hmm. technology to be transferred to, uh, to the private sector uh, mm -hmm. and come and use it. For example, for example, uh, in making a satellite, uh, there's something called a bus, okay? A uh, bus is the, in, in, in auto industry, we call it platform, okay? That's a platform mm -hmm. on the satellite is built. Now mm -hmm. that platform, which has been built by ISRO over years of experimentation, is now available to private sector mm -hmm. to just license from ISRO and build their mm -hmm. own satellite, right? Mm -hmm. now, now, this will probably just a matter of weeks when we'll start giving that license to to private sector so that's the kind of enablement that's happening so that's on the policy side on the fdi side again we are going to be looking at any constraint or concern that private sector has we haven't started that work yet but we'll look at every const any constraint that private sector has and see if there's anything that needs to be done in fdi mm -hmm. policy to allow uh, investment to come in because as we said mm. earlier, that investment is very important. And fortunately, unfortunately, a lot of investment comes from outside India on all startups, not just in mm. space startup. And therefore, mm. we have to enable uh, that investment to happen. At the same mm. time, we have another objective that we need to be able to do value addition in India mm. and not simply be uh, taking technology out and mm. doing something somewhere else. So we have to mm. meet this twin objective of bringing investment in and ensuring mm. that we are doing value addition in India uh, mm. in terms of economic impact, positive impact mm. that social, that space sector can have on India. Mm. But give us a hint, sir. Give us a glimpse of what exactly the policy could say further. I know FDI what? investment has been talked about uh, quite a bit. You're saying it will be all encompassing and all welcoming, but some tools that will be used for it? Uh, it's a bit premature, uh, Sonal, because uh, we are going to be starting the consultation process soon. Uh, mm. There have been uh, there have been uh, approaches that have been made to uh, to us, uh, to Department of Space, to any space uh, that mm. we need to uh, 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 make the FDI policy more enabling mm. uh, for investment. Mm. Mm. So we are starting the consultation process. I think it's premature for me to give, as you said, any hint of what is being thought about. Okay, so we shall connect soon once that consultation process is over to understand more from you. But sir, another concern perhaps when it comes to scientists and minds really working in the sector has been the brain drain that India has had. Uh, what will you be doing to ensure that this stays back in India? Because talent is everywhere. But to ensure that there is enough infrastructure, there is enough uh, 
merit in them staying back and working for India and being Team India? How will you ensure that? See, uh, if you look at ISRO, that's a very good example of how when you give challenging, exciting assignments to our engineers and technologists, they don't want to go abroad. Uh, hmm. ISRO probably hires the best talent, engineering talent, and I would say probably 80-85% retire with ISRO. Right? Hmm. Uh, they don't get tempted to uh, go to other countries and earn in dollars. And that's hmm. only because of the kind of work that happens in ISRO. And I'm, I'm just mm. absolutely uh, impressed, as I said earlier, uh, with the kind of work that happens in ISRO. And also the whole culture that ISRO has, the open culture that ISRO has, uh, whereby uh, even junior most engineer gets, mm. uh, as we say, a seat on the table uh, to be able to voice his opinion on any, 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 any uh, mission that is happening. And that kind mm. of open culture, the exciting work is what we need. It's not just about giving more money uh, to, mm. to an engineer. Of course, money matters. It's, I'm not saying money doesn't matter. But mm. but these are the kind of things that attracts people. And when you add it on top of that, the excitement of working in the field of space uh, mm. and the pride that it brings in you. I think mm. it's a matter of creating more and more uh, uh, education opportunities for space technology. And in fact, that's one of the areas in space is working on where we are creating mm. space courses. And we'll launch the mm. first set of space courses uh, in the next semester and two IITs, hopefully. Uh, so, okay. so, so give more, more uh, education. We are creating a engineering student competition for mm. building a, a, a CAN satellite, uh, which we'll do mm. once a year to again bring mm. in more excitement about the space. Something similar we had in auto industry with with Baha, uh, SA India. Uh, so, mm. so, therefore, you create that excitement in colleges and say, mm. I want to go into the space industry. I want to work in space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and fortunately, India also has today a fair number of retired ISRO uh, experts mm -hmm. who the youngsters can tap into. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. right. and one of the things in space will do is we are going to be publishing a directory of experts who mm -hmm. are retired from uh, mostly from ISRO and are available. Mm -hmm. To, to consult with or mentor or handhold uh, the young right. startup. So what I'm understanding from you as a spectrum of in space is creating space literacy of sorts, excitement at the grassroots level in students and college students, young entrepreneurs, and then giving them a platform of sorts to say, come make use of the brilliant minds that you have. I also read that uh, spaces that ISRO has that go up to the worth of some 25 crore are now open to be used up by these entrepreneurs to come and you know check it out, find out how it works, use their technology, and then sort of uh, you know catapult further. So this entire ecosystem is what in space will really be providing, which is really great. I love how throughout the interview you kept using these auto analogies on describing how things go. So I want to understand as we conclude, Mr. Goenka, what has been your uh, personal mission, as they say, on this, from making, like I said, from making the best vehicles on the road to now working with entrepreneurs to generate the best satellites that go into space. What's excited you about this? Well, uh, basically, uh, basically the whole thought that mm. uh, in space can potentially create a new industry almost in India. Uh, mm. a, a private industry of space entrepreneurs, uh, which doesn't exist uh, in any any sort of measurable uh, manner as of now. So whole mm. thought of that, whole thought of saying that, can we take a, a space sector economy of $7 billion to some number, 30, 35, $40 billion. Uh, mm. And, and, and uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, that thought is what kind of got me uh, back again uh, into, mm. into working almost full time uh, to say, can, can I, my learning of automotive, my learning of uh, managing large mm -hmm. projects, my learning mm -hmm. of creating entrepreneurial mindset within a company, uh, can that learning somehow help? And um, uh, I guess if I succeed even to a small extent, that will be a good way for me to say, look, I am I know more than auto. So, so far all my life has been auto and my wife always says, can you talk something other than auto? I have <laughs> auto 
for the last 40 years and so now she's so now are you talking now are you talking space to her i'm talking space space with her and she's very happy that i don't mention scorpio and words like those <laughs> at home all right and does mr goenka also dream of getting inside one of those suits and being in space himself one day i think there is a age restriction in that somewhere uh, so i probably will so not you did think about it and you did find out <laughs> i probably will not qualify i would love to but i probably will not qualify but All maybe right. you would um, maybe you would so you think about maybe you would qualify so you should think about it i'll take you up on that offer very very soon okay. on that note mr goenka this has been a fascinating fascinating discussion and there's so much to look forward to when it comes to what in space is doing and overall how this industry is expanding in india thank you so much for your time and congratulations again on this big milestone all right so that was mr pavan uh, kumar goenka in his new avatar chairman of in space for more details on what exactly in space is doing and many more such exciting interviews stay tuned to money control